This is a flipped classroom lesson. The idea of this flipped classroom is that you learn at home, you watch the video, the, the webcam at home, you can stop it, you can go back, you can listen to it as many times as you feel necessary until you actually understand it. And then in class, we'll be working on what it is that you've learned. So let's get started. This flipped classroom lesson is about the analysis and interpretation component for a poem. And the literary term that we're learning here is sonnets. Step one, answer these questions on a piece of paper. Be sure to mark on the top that it is analysis and interpretation, literary term, sonnet. You're going to need this in your log. Number one, how many lines are in the poem? Look at your poem and count them. How many stanzas or parts are there? A stanza is like a paragraph or a different part. It's when the subject changes, the topic changes slightly. Three, how many lines are there in each stanza that you see? Count them and write it down here. Only after you've answered these questions on your page should you continue to the next slide. So pause this presentation, answer the questions, and then continue. Step two. I'm going to read an introduction to sonnets for you. You can listen and follow along as I'm reading. Sonnets were first written in Italy in the 16th century. These poems had 14 lines which were divided into the octave, the first eight lines, oct, O-C-T means eight, and sestet, the following six lines. The sonnet presented a problem, usually about love, in the octave. Then there's a turn called the volta, followed by some kind of solution or resolution in the next six lines. The most famous Italian poet of sonnets was Petrarch, who you can read about if you wish, if you click on the link here. When the sonnet was adopted in England, poets sometimes changed the structure of this 14-line poem. Instead of an octave and sestet, Shakespeare, the most famous English poet of sonnets, wrote three stanzas of four lines each known as quatrains, qua is a prefix for four, and ended with a couplet. The word couple, meaning two, that's two lines. Sometimes they still kept a volta after the first two quatrains, but sometimes the couplet at the end was the resolution. Later, poets simply continued to use the sonnet form and experimented with different structures to suit their purpose. They also stopped writing only about love and wrote about their personal problems, political problems, personal experiences, or simply about an idea or about something beautiful in nature. When Shelley wrote his sonnet Ozymandias, he purposely used an unknown name for the statue, purposely did not identify the country where the, st the statue was found, and purposely did not name the traveler. He also did not use the usual English structure of quatrains, quatrains and couplets. Step 3. Now read the poem and try to figure out why Shelley did these things. Write down your impressions. You'll be working on it and we'll be talking about it in, in the next lesson.